The Spock web framework for Haskell gives you a light but complete foundation to build web servers on, be it for traditional server-side rendered applications or APIs for single-page applications. Compared to the Scotty framework, Spock is slightly richer in its feature set and is more opinionated regarding the application architecture. In this episode, we'll explore the basics of Spock and in-memory server state as we build a NoteKeeper application. We are starting with an empty project called NoteKeeper and a Cabal file specifying an executable. To get started, we add dependencies for Spock, HTTP types, text, and MTL. In main.hs, we start out by importing the web.spock and web.spock.config modules. Those are all we need to get a basic server running. The function we need in our definition of main is run spock, which has to type port to IO middleware to IO of unit. We run our server on port 8080 with the middleware returned by a function called spock. It takes a configuration and our application. We'll leave those as typed holes for now and see what we need. The app hole tells us we need some value of type Spock M of con0, ses0, st0, and unit, which is the Spock monad for defining an application. It also tells us that these type variables are ambiguous. The cfg hole tells us that we need a value of type Spock config of con, session, and state, and that the same type variables as we saw before are ambiguous. There is a connection between the type parameters of Spock M and Spock config. We begin by defining app locally, not doing any routing, only returning unit. This works, but the type variables are still ambiguous for the configuration. If we move the definition of app to the top level and give it an explicit type signature, we can pin down those types. The type Spock M is parameterized by four types the database connection type, the session type, the state type, and the monadic return values type. Initially, we won't have any database, sessions, or state, so we use the unit type for all of them. Now that we have specified which types we are using in our application, the typed hole CFG has no ambiguous variables. To construct a configuration value, we use the default Spock config taking a session configuration, a pool or connection for a database, and an initial state. The database parameter cannot be a unit value, and we'll leave it as a typed hole to illustrate why. Pool or con is parameterized by unit, and there is only one value with that type, the PC no database constructor defined by Spock. Using that, we obtain a configuration for our Spock application, and we have a rather useless but working web server. To run the web server and have it reload on source code changes, we can use the excellent GHC ID tool. By default, it only reloads your code and prints out any type errors. But if we override the test command using dash capital T, we can have it run the main function when the code successfully compiles. In our web browser, we can see that we get a 404 not found when requesting localhost 8080. We'll keep GHC ID running in the background. Before we begin defining routes, we'll create a type alias for our application type to factor out the Spock M details. Server takes a single type argument A, the monadic return value type. We use it as the type of our app definition. We define a route for get requests to the root path, responding with a text greeting. Now we get a type error, explaining that we can't pass a regular string to the text function. We enable overloaded strings to construct the text value instead. Reloading the web browser, we see our greeting hello displayed. Responding with plain text in a web application is a little dull. Instead, we'll respond with HTML using the HTML function and some lovingly handcrafted markup. Now we get a proper heading, at least. Constructing HTML markup in strings is not great though. Instead, we'll use Lucid, an embedded DSL for HTML markup. In our Cabal file, 
we add the dependency lucid along with spock-lucid, a small library integrating spock and lucid. Back in main.hs, we import the lucid function from web.spock.lucid along with the entire lucid module. Now we can use lucid instead of HTML and the lucid DSL to construct our markup. Using do notation, we can define sibling elements, which in our case will be a heading and a paragraph. Reloading the web browser, we see the two elements rendered. We're ready to implement the note keeping functionality of our application. Instead of using a server state of type unit, we'll define and use the server state and note data types. The server state consists of an IO ref holding a list of note values. An IO ref is a variable that can be mutated atomically in the IO monad. A note has an author and contents, both of type text. To use text and IRF, we need to import them. Finally, we changed the server type alias to use server state. Navigating to the next type error we get, we see that we cannot use an application requiring a state of type server state with the configuration with state of type unit. We construct a server state by mapping the constructor over a new IORF action with an empty list of nodes and use it in our configuration. It compiles again. To have something that we can render, we add two nodes to the initial state. Now we have something to render, so we change the greeting markup to instead list the notes in our state. We'll use an unordered list constructed using ul underscore, and for each note render a list item containing the note author and contents. The 4m underscore function is not in scope, so we need to import it. Also, we don't have a list of notes available. We need to read it from the IORF in our server state. The get state action in Spock returns our server state from which we can extract and read the IORF. The usage of get state might remind you of ask from the reader monad. The read IORF action has to be lifted into the action context, which is the monadic type for Spock routes. Thus, we import and use lift.io. No more errors, so we refresh the web browser and see our list of nodes rendered. Cool, but to make the application useful, we want to add a form for creating new nodes. We add a new route accepting post requests to the root path. We will use the param prime function that given a field name, extracts a field from the posted form data or responds with an error if the field is missing. We extract the author and content parameters from the form data. We also get the IO ref from our state so that we can modify it. In IO, we use atomic modify IO ref prime, the strict version of atomic modify IO ref, to atomically update the list of notes based on the existing list. Our return value is unit, and our modified state will be the list of notes with the new note appended. To use the associative operation of a semigroup, we import it from the semigroup module. Finally, we redirect the user agent to slash the root of our web application. This is a common practice known as the post redirect get pattern. Below the list of existing notes, we'll display a heading and a form with post as its method. The form will contain two labels, one for the author input and one for the contents text area. Last, it will have a submit button. 
Refreshing the web browser, we see our form. It's not pretty, but styling is outside the scope of this video. We can post a new note and see it as the browser gets redirected back to the root path and performs a GET request. Nice, we have a NoteKeeper application. We have used Spock and its built-in support for service state. In a real application, you'd probably use a persistent database for the nodes by using a database connection pool instead of PC no database. In this example application, we used server state to implement an in-memory database of nodes. In a future episode, we could replace it with a persistent database. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>